Welcome to practice. Today's practice is based on an ancient tale. The tale of Arjuna and Krishna. The tale woven in the Bhagavad Gita. And there's so much depth and so many layers to that story and so much we could talk about. But we're going to hone in on just a little piece of it today as we practice. I'd invite you to either take a comfortable seat or to lie on your back for a little bit of story time. We'll give you just a second to get comfortable. Once upon a time, a long time ago, as all good stories begin, a war was about to begin, and it was an inevitable war. There was no way to stop it. Too much had happened, and they were past any point of negotiation. The Bhagavad Gita opens its text with Samjaya, the oracle, and Dhritarashtra, the blind king, standing on a cliff. And the blind king asks Samjaya, the oracle, to tell him what he sees. They're standing up on a cliff edge overlooking a battlefield. A battlefield where there is a clamor of elephants and drums, of horns and conch shells being blown. There are thousands of people ready to slaughter one another in what would be one of the bloodiest battles to ever land on Indian soil. It's best to think of this as sort of a Lords of the Rings kind of situation, if you can envision that. That level of intensity of men facing off on the battlefield. And there's an added element here because this was to be a fratricidal war. It was brother against brother. It was people that had once loved one another, that had been disciple to one another. It was family. The text opens with Samjaya honing in on the battlefield to tell Dhritarashtra, the blind king, what he sees. And right here we get our first important point, which is what are you choosing to listen to and where are you choosing to hone your attention? He could have listened to anything that was going on. He could have dropped into any conversation on that battlefield, but he chooses to listen in on one conversation. And that is the conversation between the godman Krishna and the warrior prince Arjuna. Arjuna was the head of the Pandava army. It was his dharma, his duty to lead his family into battle. And Krishna was his non-combatant, his charioteer. He's the guy who's like in the back of the chariot that's going to give him good advice and is going to root him on and is going to sing his praises if he does well in battle when it's all said and done. He came to be in that position because Krishna offered to both sides of this war either all of his companies of armies or his council. And the other side, the Kauravas, they chose his military, but Arjuna chose his wise counsel. The Bhagavad Gita, it's like this conch is blown for the battle to start, and then everything just goes still. Everything stops, like in a movie, and freezes. And for the next 18 chapters, we hear this beautiful, almost monologue from Krishna to Arjuna. And one of the things that we learn about right in the beginning is Arjuna's despondency. Arjuna looks out on the field and sees people that he loves, people that he's going to have to slaughter in a moment leading this war. And he turns to Krishna and falls to his knees in utter despair. And he, he basically looks to him and is like, how did we get here? What, ha what have we done? I can't do this. I can't kill these people. I can't hurt these people. And Krishna does not give the reply that we would expect. He basically tells him to man up. He tells him that it's too late to back out now, that it's too late to turn around and walk off the battlefield because we were already here and there was no going back. And then he says something to him that is quite interesting, and it's one of the earliest places that we get the word yoga in a text. He tells Arjuna to yoke himself to the battle. 
And this isn't really that unusual because all the way back in the Rig Veda, the oldest text that we have from the yoga tradition, the notion of the chariot was always about going to battle. And this was always the place where the word yuj, yoga, was used. The other time it's used is referring to harnessing an animal to a, to a cart, taking something that is wild and bringing it into divine service. But here, again, just as in the Rig Veda, we get this reference to yoke yourself to the battle, to prepare yourself and to go forward. And Arjun is feeling frozen. He thinks that he shouldn't step forward, that he shouldn't do anything because he doesn't want to accumulate karma. But Krishna implores him and tells him that to not act is actually an action in itself with profound consequences and tells him that it is his dharma and his duty and in his nature that he should stand up and fight for the greater good. There's a bigger thing going on in this text, which is that the whole thing is describing in beautiful metaphor a battle that goes on in our own minds all of the time. It's the battle over our own consciousness between nihilism and narcissism and some more profound goodness that we can cultivate in ourselves, a kind of truth-telling. This text is so particularly timely right now as we face so many challenges because each one of us is already on the battlefield and we are being asked to yoke ourselves to the battle. We are being asked, what are you going to do when you feel like you've been brought to your knees? What are you going to do to hold your inner resolve and to not let nihilism and narcissism win, but instead to do your duty and your dharma and to do what is good and what is right because you are honorable. How will you stand and fight? And who is in your chariot with you? Who have you bound yourself to? Who are you fighting this war with? And how will you hold your heart steady? Today, we're going to move through a warrior flow. And I want you to be purposeful and practical and pragmatic and powerful and playful and to find the way to play the polarity of both grace and effort in your physicality and in your mind. And as you're moving through the practice today, what qualities of your own consciousness can you kill today? What negativities, what things have arisen as you have stepped into this uncertain and challenging time? What is the battlefield going on in your mind, in your consciousness, that you are being invited to face? Who are you yoking yourself to? And how will you yoke yourself to the battle in these uncertain times so that you can be a force of good in a world that is not? That you can be a force of steadiness in a world that is not? In a world that is complicated and chaotic, but all at once compelling because there is something worth having. Take a moment on your back and just connect to your breath. And as you breathe here, deep in the breath, breathing through your nose, inhaling and exhaling, I want you to start imagining fire rising up your back as you inhale. And this fire is your vigilance and it's your effort. And hold the top of every in-breath and let that fire be transmuted the same way it is in the atmosphere and let it rain down as water grace down the front of you as you exhale. The qualities of grace is willingness and receptivity. So breathe around yourself, fire up your back, water down your front, grace and effort. And know that you are at the center of yourself. You are the mediator and you're the one who gets to choose how much grace and how much effort to apply here. Make the inhalation effortful and then receive grace on the exhale. Building evermore a steamy center where fire and water mix. That steamy center of presence. Playing the polarity, you as the ultimate mediator. Triangulate yourself. Take the memory that is behind you and the potential that is in front of you and mediate that. And continue with fire and water, grace and effort, your vigilance, your receptivity. 
be powerful and be purposeful and be precise. Notice the ways in which you try to skirt around yourself or cheat yourself. Stay steady. Take three more rounds of this intentional breath of fire and water, effort and grace. a nice deep breath in through your nose and exhale out your mouth one more time deep breath in through your nose and exhale and bend your knees into your chest roll over to one side and come up to all fours When you arrive on all fours, plant your hands under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. Pause here and look forward. Push the floor away harder than it's pushing you. Fill up the space between your shoulder blades, making this sort of cobra hood shape through your back. Pull your navel point back and now step your right foot back and your left foot back into a plank position. And once again, even more, push the floor away. And now tuck your chin to your chest roll up onto your toes and scoop and roll yourself up and back like a wave into downward facing dog when you arrive in downward facing dog tilt your tailbone up and back so that there is an arch brought into the back and draw your chest towards your thighs and from here float up onto your toes so that your seat comes even higher and find more of an anterior tilt so poke your tailbone up and back and then start to tuck your tail underneath of you, pull your abdomen in powerfully and start to round your back vertebrae by vertebrae, slowly coming forward, push the floor away, round your upper back until your shoulders come over your wrists. And you should be pretty high on your toes now. Now keep your legs engaged, but start to melt your pelvis towards the floor, rolling your chest open into floating upward facing dog. Look straight ahead, super powerful. Be purposeful, be precise. And now start to roll your shoulders forward, tuck your chin to your chest, push your upper middle back to the sky and coil back super slow all the way up onto your big toes, right back into that downward facing dog. Look forward at your hands and jump your feet to malasana on the outside, feet outside of your hands, lift your chest into a prayer squat. Push your knees into your elbows and your elbows out into your knees. Look straight ahead, set your drishti, your focus. And here, in what way can you yoke yourself to this moment? What courage can you draw up? How can you be a little more present and a little more powerful here in your feet? Bring your fingertips to the floor and spin off of your heels and come into a wide fold. Heel toe your feet together. Bend your knees a little bit and fold forward, belly to your thighs. And bring your hands to the backs of your heels. And once again, tuck your tailbone and start to coil your spine rounding forward and open up into a halfway lift, a little spinal wave. And exhale, belly to your thighs, melt back down. Do that a couple more times. Think about a strand of pearls unfurling, spine opening forward and rolling back down. Again, a halfway lift, coiling up and all the way back down. This time, keep your knees bent, abs in, and roll your spine up vertebrae by vertebrae, tracing the backs of your legs. Sweep your arms up alongside of your ears. Look up towards your palms, take a little back bend. And then lower your arms next to your side and look straight ahead. Engage your thighs and be strong here. Inhale, take your arms up. And exhale, fold forward. 
plant your hands next to your feet and bend your knees, coming into a little tiny squat. Shift the weight forward into your hands. Start to bend your elbows like chaturanga and jump back and lower all the way to your belly. From here, keep your toes curled under, drag your knees in so your butt comes up into the air. So you're in an anterior tilt in the pelvis again and then press the tops of your feet into the floor. Now tuck your tailbone underneath as you pull your abs in and vertebrae by vertebrae, scoop and roll up into upward facing dog. Open your chest at the top. Draw your chin to your chest. Find that cobra hood again. Push your upper middle back to the sky and roll up and back downward facing dog. And breathe here. Arjuna's weapon is a bow. And Arjuna can shoot that bow even in the dark, and he never misses because he is so practiced at precision and because he is so focused. So here, part of yoking ourselves to the battle over our minds, the battle over our hearts, is that we stay precise and focused and that we keep our vision. So step your feet together. Get very intentional and inhale, stretch your right leg to the sky. Keep your hips square. Push through the ball of your foot. Float up onto the left ball of your foot. Drag your right heel in. And then scoop and round. Draw your knee to your nose as you roll forward. Pause, hover here. Push the floor away even more. Round your upper back. And step your right foot between your hands. Finding this low lunge position, lengthen your chest forward. Now plant your left palm and make a right, a fist in your right hand. And now drag your elbow back like you are stringing a bow. Stack your shoulders for archer. And then bend your back knee and lift your bow up. Pause here. Stack your shoulders over your hips. Drag that right elbow back. And now release Arjuna's arrow up into the sky. And spiral your left arm back as you pin your left hand heel down. Take your right arm forward, warrior two. Gaze out over your right hand in Virabhadrasana this posture of courage and grace and stability. And now from here, circle your right arm over your head as you straighten your right leg, turn your right foot in and your left foot out. Cross your arms at your forearms and now push your right hand down towards your right foot and your left arm up towards the sky. Look down at your right leg. This we call a double block. Sink into your hips. Now weave your right hand by your side Switch the feet so your right foot is pointing forward, left toes in, and reach long, extended warrior. Take your right fingertips to the floor and your left arm up to the sky, extended side angle. Reach your left arm alongside of your ear. Keep reaching, plant your left hand on the floor. Spin onto the ball of your back foot. Push the floor away and drag your right heel towards your butt. And then stretch your right leg back up to the sky once again and lower your right foot down. Pause in downward facing dog, take a breath. Float up onto your toes and tilt your tailbone up and back even higher. And then start to find that pelvic tilt, tuck your tailbone underneath as you pull your abdominals in, push the floor away this time. When your shoulders come over your wrists, bend your elbows into chaturanga and lower all the way to the floor. Keep your toes curled under and drag your knees in. Press the tops of the feet down. Tuck your tailbone underneath of you. Pull your abdomen in. Scoop and roll all the way up into upward facing dog. Tuck your chin to your chest. Push the floor away so, 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 so strong. And roll up and back, downward facing dog. Step your feet together. Stretch your left leg up to the sky. Demi point your foot. Float onto the ball of the right foot. Drag your heel to your butt. Draw your knee in. Coil your spine. Round forward. Push the floor away. Pause here. Be powerful. Be purposeful. And step your left foot through. Plant your right hand on the ground. Make a fist in your left. Embody Arjuna in all of his focus, in his precision, and drag your arrow back, stacking the shoulders. Bend your right knee. Arch your pose. Lift your right hand. And then release your arrow, circle your right arm back as you pin your right heel down, left arm forward, warrior two. 
Sweep your left arm alongside of your ear as you pass through goddess pose. Come into double block, right toes open, left toes in, look down at your left foot. And then again, weave your left hand by your side, spin your left toes open, right foot in, reaching into extended warrior. Left fingertips to the floor, take your right arm to the sky. Circle your right arm alongside of your ear, extended side angle. Take your right hand down, plant your palms. Spin onto the ball of your foot, pick your left foot up. Reach up and back and lower your left foot down. Pause here. Take a moment and downward facing dog. Feel your breath. Reconnect with steadiness. It's only when we're at the center of ourselves that we can stop from being pulled by every single passing storm. We build our center so that we can truly be the mediators. So here again, mediate your memory and your potential. Mediate fire and water, grace and effort. Step your feet together once again. A little add-on to our little sequence. Stretch your right leg up. Push through the ball of your foot. Drag your right heel to your butt. Round your back. Push the floor away. Scoop, hollow the front body. And step the right foot through. Make a fist in your right hand. Drag your arrow back. Stack your shoulders. Bend your left knee. Look forward, archer. Release your arrow and spin open to warrior two. Cross your right arm over your left, switch the feet, double block. Now this time, bring your hands out in front of you and spin onto your right heel and lower your seat all the way down into skandhasana. Swing your right hand back behind you so your hand is directly underneath of your shoulder. Flex your right toes and bridge your hips, warrior's bridge. Lower your hips back down. Here, swing your arms over to the left. You can use your hands if you need to. Come onto your left foot. Come onto your right foot. And now pick up your imaginary sword off of the ground and launch yourself forward onto your right foot. Lift your left leg up, flying warrior. Bring both of your hands to your heart. Drag your knee to your chest. Come to stand. Hold here. Re-extend your left leg forward. Be powerful. Be purposeful. Rebend your left knee. And now hinge through your hip. Thread your left leg back and your arms forward. Warrior three. Bend your right knee. Step the ball of the left foot back. Lift your chest. High lunge. Bring your hands to the floor and step back, downward facing dog. Tilt your pubic bone up and back, float to the balls of the feet, and then tuck your tail underneath of you, scoop and roll forward, round your back, roll all the way through to chaturanga and lower to your belly. Drag your knees in, put your seat up in the air, press the tops of your feet down. Tuck your tailbone underneath of you, scoop and roll all the way into upward facing dog. Chin to your chest, round your upper back, find that cobra hood scoop and roll all the way. Downward facing dog. Step your feet together and sweep your left leg to the sky, demi point the foot. Drag your left heel in towards your butt, round your back and scoop and roll forward. Step your left foot through. Plant your right palm, make a fist in the left and draw your arrow back. Bend your right knee, archer. Sweep your right arm back and your left arm forward, warrior two, and then keep circling. Switch the position of the feet, double block, left hand down, right arm up. Extend your arms out in front of you, spin to your left heel, and lower down into skandhasana. Sweep your left arm back behind you, shoulder directly over your wrist, and then lift up, warrior's bridge. Drag your hips back down, and again, that action you're going to swing your arms forward, get some momentum, pass through goddess, scoop up your imaginary sword with your right hand, and then launch forward, flying warrior. From here, bring your hands to your heart. 
Bend your right knee into your chest as you float to stand. Kick your right foot forward powerfully. And then thread your right foot back and lean forward into warrior three. Right leg back, arms forward, chest forward. Be powerful, be precise, be purposeful. Bend your left knee and float the ball of your right foot to the floor, coming into a high lunge. And then take your hands down, pick up your left foot, and step it up and back, downward facing dog. Take a moment in downward facing dog and reconnect with your breath. And from here, come forward to a plank. Lower your right forearm down and your left forearm down. Forearm plank, push the floor away. Drop your knees to the floor, tuck your tailbone underneath of you, bring the tops of your feet down. And slowly, slowly coil your thighs, your pubic bone down, and then lift your chest, sphinx pose. Inhale here. Exhale, tuck your chin to your chest, push the floor away, round your upper middle back, and scoop up to your knees. Once again, bring your thighs down, your pubic bone, and then pull your chest through, back bend. One more time, tuck your chin to your chest, scoop and roll up, and then lower your thighs, super slow, your pubic bone, and pull your chest through. Swing your left forearm across your body and kick your right heel in, reach back and grab the inside of your foot. And then drag your right heel towards your outer right hip. Push your pubic bone down, drag your chest forward. And then re-extend the right leg, both forearms down. Swing your right forearm across, kick your left heel in. Grab the inside of the foot, and then drag your heel towards your butt. Finding a moment of grace, surrender, and receptivity here. Moving out of the power, but staying purposeful. And then re-extend your left leg, both forearms down. Lower your belly onto the floor. Reach back and take the inner lace at your lower back. Push your knuckles back and lift your chest, lift your feet. Take a nice deep breath in and a long breath out. Slowly lower down, bring your hands next to your ribs and press yourself up to all fours. Find what we call a four point base here. So widen your feet so that your knees and your ankles are in line with your hands and then hover your knees off of the floor. Now from here, shift the weight to your right hand and thread your right foot through, keeping your seat low to the floor and guarding your face. On the ball of the foot, pick up your right foot, cross it under, come all the way through, switch the weight to your left hand, pick up your left foot and place the ball of the foot. Again, pick up your left foot, weave back to the center, coming back to your four point base. Let's do that again slow. Weight the right hand, pick up your right foot. As you thread it through, place the right foot, keeping your hips low. Weave your right foot back, come all the way through to the other side, pick the left foot up, and then come back to your four point base. Let's do that a little quicker. To the right, switch the feet left, switch the feet right, switch the feet left, to the right, to the left, and come back to that four point base. Good, we're gonna add on a movement. So from here, take your right foot over, find that little kicking lion, upward facing lion, and now bridge your hips, lower your hips down, and kick over to the other side. Bridge your hips, lower your hips down, kick back to the right, bridge the hips, lower the hips down, kick back to the left, Bridge the hips, lower the hips, come back to that four point base and lower down to your knees. Press back to child's pose and rest for just a moment. Continue to play with the polarity of grace and effort, of being powerful and purposeful and also soft. Roll yourself up to all fours and 
Press up and back to downward facing dog. Step your feet together and inhale. Take your right leg up to the sky. Drag your heel to your butt. And now start to roll forward. But when you get about halfway there, spin to the sole of your left foot. Pick up your left hand, bend both of your knees, and shoot your right foot through. Slide your right foot away from you and come up into a warrior's bridge. Drop your hips back down. Coil your right foot back in. Pick it up off of the floor and spin all the way into scorpion dog. And then keep leaning, keep spinning, and drop your right foot to the floor. Drop your hips down to the floor. And then warrior's bridge, bridge your hips. Lift up, arch back. Bridge your hips again, lower them back to the floor. And now spin back to that three-legged dog. And step your right foot to the outside of your right hand. And look forward in a lizard lunge. Pause here, chest forward. Drop to your back knee if you wish. And you may stay right here, or if you have the opening, come down onto your left forearm. And then from here, roll to the pinky edge of your right foot. Kick your left foot in. Reach back and grab your left foot. And then kick your foot into your hand and open your chest. Re-extend your left leg if you've taken a hold of it. Both hands down to the floor. Walk back up onto your palms. Spin back onto your right foot. And step up and back to downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, a rolling vinyasa. Tilt your pubic bone up to the sky. Float to the balls of the feet. And now tuck your tail. Scoop your abdomen in. Hollow the front body. Roll all the way forward into Chaturanga and all the way to your belly. Keep your toes curled under. Bring the knees in. Press the tops of your feet down. Tuck your tailbone underneath of you. Scoop around. Roll all the way into upward facing dog. Tuck your chin to your chest. Push the floor away. Scoop and roll all the way up and back. Other side, take your left leg high. Push through the ball of your foot. And now, just like the other side, bend your heel to your butt. And as you come forward, bend both of your knees, spin to your right foot, shoot your left leg across, and slide out into that warrior's bridge. Recoil, bend back in, pick your foot up, plant your right palm, and now spin all the way up and open, passing through scorpion dog. When you can't reach any farther, pick up your left hand, and then drop your hips low to the ground. Now bridge your hips up, warrior's bridge. Bring the hips back towards the floor and recoil. Pick that left foot up. Keep the knee high towards your armpit. Roll forward and step your left foot to the outside of your left hand. Look forward. If you wish, drop to your back knee. And if you have the opening in your body, come down on your right forearm. Spin your left toes open, roll to the pinky edge of your left foot, and optionally kick your right heel in. Grab a hold of your right foot, open your chest, lean back. Big breath. Release the foot, bring your hands down, and walk your hands back up and in. Pick up your left foot and step back to Downward facing dog. Roll forward to a plank and lower to your abdomen. Dhanurasana floor bow is named after Arjuna's bow. And so we will take Dhanurasana floor bow and be not only the warrior but the instrument. Reach your fingertips back towards your heels. Lift your chest. Lift your feet. And start to do a hamstring curl until you can grab a hold of your ankles. Push your pubic bone down into the mat and then kick into your hands. And it doesn't need to be your biggest back bend. Back bends are, to be honest, not my forte. 
But even here, this is my yoking to the battle. Kick into your hands, chest lifts. Pull your abdomen in and breathe. One more breath. Slowly lower down and stack your hands, rest your forehead, and just breathe for a moment. Bring your hands next to your ribs and press yourself up to all fours once again. And downward facing dog. Look forward at your hands and jump, float, step all the way through to a seat. Bring your feet out in front of you and extend your legs, Navasana. Again, push through the balls of your feet, spread your toes. And then slowly re-bend your knees. Hook your elbows around your knees and just soften for a moment. And allow things to start to settle a little bit, re-inviting grace and receptivity once again. Come to lie on your back. Play up the soles of your feet, hip distance apart, your palms next to your hips. Inhale, lift your hips, sweep your arms alongside of your ears. Exhale, lower your hips, lower your arms. Again, inhale, lift your hips, lift your arms. Exhale, lower your hips, lower your arms. Two more. Last time. Pause at the bottom and cross your right leg over your left and bring your knees towards your chest, grab a hold of your feet. From here, drag your left heel towards your right butt cheek and roll over onto your left thigh and then keeping a hold of your right foot, extend your right leg. And this we call Kancho twist, comes to us from the Buddha Khan tradition. Close your eyes and breathe here. Starting to let things settle once again, re-inviting grace where you have made effort. If you want more grace, make more effort and then be willing and open to receive it. Slowly, slowly, bend your knees and roll back into the midline, releasing your feet. Cross your left leg over your right. Take your right heel towards your left butt cheek and then lower your right foot to the floor, right thigh and extend your left leg long. And rest in your twist. And release the legs once again, weave back to the center. Draw your knees into your chest and widen them towards your armpits. Stack your ankles over your knees and take happy baby pose. You can rock side to side here. Starting this process of softening and turning inward to successfully yoke ourselves to the battle, to successfully stay at the center of ourselves requires that we know when to turn out and when to turn inward and to know how to connect with ourselves before we connect with the world. And bring your knees all the way into your chest and wrap your forearms around your shins and draw your forehead up to the knees.
and lower everything onto the floor. Extend your legs, extend your arms, nestle your scapulars, shoulder blades underneath of you, let your feet fall open wide and close your eyes. As you come to lie on your back, take three or four deep breaths just to start to hone your attention to your breath. That singular focus, that precision that is required. For one final moment, making a bit of effort. And then release control of the breath. Arjuna had to come to the end of himself, to a place where things were really, really hopeless before he was able to step fully into who and what he was. Like all of us, he went through a process of figuring out what he is not, of burnishing and burning off all the objects, the pieces of himself that he identified with that were keeping him from the I am. And yoking ourselves to the battle requires that we not be distracted by the circumstances of the world around us, but that we stay attuned to our inner landscape. We know that the real battle that we are fighting is over our own consciousness and over our own hearts. Who are you going to be when the pressure is on? Who are you when there's chaos and there's crisis? Because I have news for you, that's who you really are. It's easy to be kind when things are going well. It is easy to be purposeful when you're feeling successful. But what are you doing in moments of failure? What are you doing when the pressure is on? How do you show up then? How do you yoke yourself to the battle? That's the question. And it's the question that will determine the ways in which you step into highest possibility or do not. In the yoga tradition, we hold within ourselves the serpentine selves. And the thing about the serpent is that it knows how to be comfortable in the uncomfortable. And it knows when it's in a comfortable place not to get too comfortable because it's never going to stay that way for long. It knows how to shed itself when it needs to shed itself, never fully losing those pieces, but stepping fully into the new at the same time. And to hold all these paradoxes within ourselves. All of us, every single one of us, is capable of a great number of things we would not like to admit. And this is why we have to continually stay attentive to the garden of our hearts. And that is the invitation. Allow yourself to let go now, to start to ease into effortless awareness. And let your attention just rest on your breath, the movement of the belly.
going to be in the world. Gently, steadily, noticing small movements in your fingers and your toes, gaining awareness to physicality. Roll yourself over to a fetal position on your right side and pause there. your left hand and press yourself up to your seat. Come to a meditation seat and close your eyes. Put your hands on your thighs or the mudra palms back of the hand stacked in one palm with your thumbs touching and bring the chin towards your chest. Once again, return to that ujjayi breath, that slightly audible oceanic breath, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Connect your hearing to your breathing. Again, visualize fire rising up your back. Water down the front as you exhale. Continue to cultivate this yin center of presence, you at the center of yourself. Be organized and formal, be precise, be powerful, and yet be effortless. Know that you're the mediator and that when you need more grace, apply more effort. Know that if there's too much effort, you'll burn yourself up, and if there's too much grace, you'll find yourself in a puddle. Learn to mediate that well. The Buddha warrior. your hands to your heart. Om Chayambhaka Nijamehe Shugambhin Pushtivardhana Urva Rukaniva Bandhana Mrityo Mikshaye Amrita Om Chayambhaka Nijamehe Shugambhin Pushtivardhana Urva Rukaniva Bandana Mrityo Mukshaye Amrita Om Chayam Bekam Yajamahe Shugandin Pushtivardana Urva Rukaniva Bandana Mrityo Mukshaye Amrita mantra for overcoming the great death. And that great death is fear. How will you yoke yourself to the battle? How will you stand strong? And who have you got in your chariot with you? Choose wisely. Learn to apply graceful effort. Learn to be open to receive. Learn that is what is required. Know when and how to fight and know when to be soft. And hold all of these paradoxes within yourself. Where are these mediators? Are you the magician? Rub your palms together vigorously in front of your face. And cup your palms over your eyes. And bring your eyes behind your hands, letting in the dark. Release your palms, let in the light, and 